You're probably here because of this invasive insect, the spotted lanternfly. You've come to the right place. We have a team of people working to look for and manage this insect. This is an insect that really needs no introduction. It's wreaking havoc from vineyards to your backyard. Even late night comedians have taken notice. <laughs> this summer, an invasive species, the spotted lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly, I don't care what experts say, I'm gonna eat your craw. So stick with us and we'll tell you everything you need to know to identify and manage the invasive spotted lanternfly. I'm here with three spotted lanternfly experts. Amy is leading the state's response to spotted lanternfly. Jackie is a spotted lanternfly detector dog handler. And Abby is a researcher who's been working on spotted lanternfly for several years. We're all so passionate about these invasive insects and what they're doing to our forests and our natural resources. We're really invested in getting the information out. We can't be everywhere at once. We really need people like you knowing what to do, knowing when to report it, and knowing how to manage it to help us protect our beautiful natural resources. Let's start with how to identify the spotted lanternfly. This is the adult spotted lanternfly. It's the most obvious stage, so a lot of people see this first because it's big, it hops around, more likely to be on the plants near your home. They are grayish brownish with black spots and a black pattern toward the tip of their wings. And if you were to pry up these wings, you actually see their bright red hind wings um, right underneath. But when they're at rest, you don't see them because the front wings are covering them. A lot of people think they're moths, but they're actually more closely related to cicadas and aphids. They have those piercing sucking mouth parts that they use to retrieve nutrients out of their plants. The spotted lanternfly is native to Southeast Asia. We think it was introduced around 2012, but it was first found in 2014, and it has since been spreading very quickly. The life cycle of the spotted lanternfly goes something like this. Adults are active in the summer, then they lay egg masses that overwinter. Those egg masses hatch, and the nymphs go through four different instars, which finally become adults again in late June. So if you find the adult or any of the other life stages, then you've got problems. To explain the very real problems that we're facing with spotted lanternfly, let me introduce Amy, who deals with these insects every single day. The main reason we're taking this insect so seriously is because it is a major pest of plants, especially agriculturally important plants like grapes and hops. Uh, it's also a huge threat to the nursery industry, which means that it's going after a lot of products that you love, like wine and beer, as well as landscape plants like roses. They don't have any natural enemies here, so they get up into just huge numbers, and they're actually plant sap feeders. So they have a straw-like mouth part that they insert into the plant to draw out that sugary sap, and then they expel the excess water out of the other side. So the stuff that comes out of the other end we call honeydew, which I can actually feel raining down on me right now. It coats everything underneath the trees that they're feeding on in that sticky honeydew. That can attract things like sooty mold, uh, that can actually prevent plants on the understory from conducting photosynthesis. So all in all, this is just a nasty insect to deal with. We're doing a lot to slow the spread of spotted lanternfly, but the good news is there's a lot that you can do as a homeowner. And that's what Jackie and her dog Kita focus on. My name is Jackie Perdue. I work with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. This is my detector dog, Kita. She can find spotted lanternflies. So she is looking for all life stages of spotted lanternfly. Um, she will look for egg masses, nymphs, adults. We use them to look in places where we might not be able to see them. Um, we might not have thought to look in a place like that. The biggest concern with spotted lanternfly is they are really good at hitchhiking. So they will jump on anything that moves pretty much. It could be a car, a bus, a camper, and they'll hold on at really high speeds even. So they may be on the outside or the inside of your vehicle and they'll be an unwanted guest when you arrive home. <laughs> Definitely if you're traveling to an area that is known to be infested with spotted lanternfly, I would check everything before you come back. They could have either snuck in there or if it's egg laying season, they can lay their eggs on almost anything. So they could have laid eggs on something while you weren't looking, you may not see it until they hatch out in your yard in the spring. So the one thing you're probably wondering is how can I control spotted lanternfly? The good news is there's lots of tools available, but it probably depends on the life stage that you find and the tools that are available to you. Egg masses look a lot like mud. They're often laid on tree trunks or branches, but they can really be laid on anything, which is one of the big threats because they can move around. When they're first laid, they're very shiny, but then they dull and look like this mud-like appearance. 
the number one thing we want you to do for them is destroy them. You can do this by scraping or crushing them with a credit card. You can pull them off whatever they've been laid on and put them into soapy water or ethanol. Just anything to kill the eggs that are contained inside of them. Horticultural oil, such as neem oil, is an option. The layer on the outside of the egg masses actually allows for gas exchange for oxygen to move in and out of the eggs. And horticultural oil applied completely to the egg mass will smother the eggs inside. Once the eggs hatch, you're worrying about managing nymphs and adults. Here, let me show you the nymph. When they hatch from the eggs, they become this immature sage. At first, they're black with white spots, but as they get older, they become black and bright red with white spots. There's a few options available. You can physically remove them, you can spray them, or you can trap them. And what you do depends on your management goals. So let's get to it. Believe it or not, the first way you can get rid of them is to stomp on them when you find them at the base of the trees or near your home. Alternatively, you can vacuum up individuals and empty them into a bucket of soapy water. Any wet or dry vacuum with a hose attachment can work. There are a few sprays that are effective at killing spotted lanternfly also. Insecticidal soaps like this can be sprayed directly onto spotted lanternfly. The insecticidal soap disrupts the cell membranes of the insect and works best when the insect is completely coated. Contact insecticides like this work on contact and provide a quick knockdown if you see a bunch of nymphs and adults. However, this requires repeat applications to be effective. Systemic insecticides are taken up by the plant and dispersed throughout the entire plant. They work from the inside out, so when spotted lanternfly feed on the plant, they ingest the insecticides and die. These insecticides are highly effective and do last longer. However, we urge caution because these chemicals can impact pollinators, so everyone should use cautiously and consult with a professional to minimize risk. Traps can also be effective, which is Abby's specialty. Here's a trap I use a lot. This is called a circle trap. It's made out of mesh and wood and a funnel. As a way to regulate their body temperature, they will move up and down the tree as the temperature changes throughout the day. And once they reach the bottom and start heading back up, a good number of them will walk up into this trap and just continue on into the bag, which they can't escape. This is a good way of trapping both adults and nymphs. Another option is this, the sticky trap. This works by having insects walk across it and get trapped, just like a glue trap that you would use for insects inside your house. Just remember to add the bird scare tape, these wonderful streamers that help keep it from catching birds, lizards, and frogs as well. Counterintuitively, you can also provide an environment like this lampshade trap for them to lay all of their eggs on in one area. Once egg laying season is done, usually in the winter, you can then use any of the previous methods to destroy the egg masses before disposing of the shingles. Finally, you can manage the spotted lanternfly by managing plants. This is the tree of heaven, the spotted lanternfly's favorite food. The first thing you can do on your property is to identify and remove tree of heaven. This will reduce the spotted lanternfly populations in your area. Just know that the tree of heaven is really hard to get rid of and if you chop it down, you're going to have to use some herbicides to keep it from re-sprouting. Given that we know spotted lanternflies love tree of heaven, you can also use it as a trap tree. In other words, a tree that you intentionally leave to lure the spotted lanternfly from other plants in your yard. The trick is that you treat this tree with insecticides so that when spotted lanternfly feed on it, they die. This systemic insecticide should be applied by a licensed professional, but it is very effective. So now you know how to identify and manage the invasive spotted lanternfly. If you do see it, make sure you report it to your state's agricultural department. And I'm even gonna ask you to go one step further. If you found this video useful, please share it with your neighbors and your friends. The more people we have that are looking for this insect and know how to manage it, the better equipped we are to protect our natural resources and keep this invasive insect at bay.